Recording. Everybody mute. Good morning, everybody. Okay, Roger, now that we're live streamed, we're ready for you. Thank you, Roger. In terms of announcements that we have this week, I want to remind everybody that on uh, January 23rd, Sunday, January 23rd, we have the annual meeting. So I want to make sure everybody is aware of that. Uh, there's a bunch, there are a bunch of meetings that are coming up this week. Uh, most all of them are on Zoom, uh, and they start with 
the trustee meeting property and finance or property and management right after the service today. And I think everybody on that should have received a Zoom link to the meeting. And if you haven't, uh, send me an email and we'll send it off to you. I think. Oh, the other thing I was going to just mention was um, with the numbers, COVID numbers going through the roof over this past week or so, please be careful. I'm hearing from one of our um, nurse friends who works in the school district that it seems to be the only thing that is keeping the Omicron variant away is N95 masks that are properly fitting your face. So it it's just going everywhere. So, yeah. Uh, were there any other announcements? Okay, I'm gonna look at the Facebook live chat here real fast. Okay, yeah, other than everybody is really enjoying suddenly seeing the sun out, huh? Yeah, and hopefully it'll will evaporate and melt off some of this snow. So let us then start our gathering together by humbly acknowledging that we gather today on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin and throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascade watershed since time immemorial. Let us also acknowledge the harms the church has placed upon our indigenous siblings, often done in the name of God. And let us join in expressing our heartfelt repentance for the harms done and our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack tribe for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. If you live in another part of the United States or in another country, I invite you to find out who first lived on the land you are living on and whose backbreaking labor helped build it into the community you know it as today. May we each commit to working alongside our neighbors to protect Mother Earth and in so doing, honor one another. So let us center ourselves in silence and breathe deeply as we prepare to worship the beauty and the goodness of the divine. For we remember that no matter who we are, no matter where we are on life's journey, we are welcome here. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joel. Good morning, everybody. Our first hymn today is Water River Spirit Grace. <clears throat> traced in sculpting me in sculpting me traced in sculpting me in sculpting me water rivers spirit grace sweep over me sweep over me recarve the dead 
fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. Source of love and mercy, as we enter a new year in the life of this church, may our love for you be made known in our love for one another. Guide our footsteps into the glory of your ways, that we may live as you created us to be. Beloved children, crowned with glory and honor. As we remember with gratitude our baptism this day, Remind us that we are people of the water, a people made whole to the spirit made known in Christ Jesus. May our worship reflect the greatness of our calling and the honor of our heritage. Amen. And now we'll have passing of the peace and lighting of the peace candle. The one who baptizes us with Father, fire, and the Holy Spirit is here to wash away our guilt and pain. Turn to one another and offer signs of peace of, that only Christ can give. Peace be with you. And also with you. Okay, kids. So, this morning, I heard that around a breakfast table, perhaps, or maybe it was just in the living room or who knows where, but this morning, there was some discussion about Jesus and how come um, we have very few stories of Jesus's childhood, young adulthood. I mean, Jesus suddenly just shows up as about a 30-year-old guy getting baptized. And it's only in Luke and in Mark where we have these very short little stories, and that's it. We kind of skip over everything. So I thought I would talk about that today because it comes as a question from you kids. So if you kids have a question you want to know an answer to, or we could try it this way, if you want to see if you can stump the pastor and ask a question that I have no idea how to answer, just send one in, okay? <laughs> you can email me, you could text me, you could message me somehow, you can send it in, okay? So this question comes from Michael, and Joseph. Okay. So, do you kids know what the first gospel less book would have been? So, was it Matthew? Was it Mark? Matthew. Was it Luke? Ma it was Matthew. Was it John? See, so I'm hearing two votes so far that are saying that you think Matthew was written first. Not in order first, but which one was written first? Any ideas? Matthew. It's Mark. Mark. It's Mark. Yep, Mark was written first. And it's the, if you look at them, it's the shortest one. So Mark was written first. And Mark has no stories about Jesus as a kid. Jesus just shows up and gets baptized and wham. As Mark likes to say, immediately this happened. And then immediately this happened. And then immediately this happened. Okay? And so they think Mark was written about the year 70. And if Jesus died at about 30 
plus or minus a little bit, somewhere in there. That would be 40 years after Jesus' death, right? So how many of you sometimes like to hear stories about your parents when they were kids? Yeah. I remember it was fun when our kids were very little. We showed up at Thanksgiving at my aunt's house. And my aunt and uncle were there, and my folks didn't, couldn't come for some reason. I think the pass was closed, or they were scared of the pass being closed. And so I heard all these stories about my dad when he was in high school, right? And they were funny stories about how he broke his leg, and I, there were stories I didn't even know about, right? They were great stories. But now that my aunt is gone, where would you hear those stories, right? Your parents. Maybe if they tell them, right? So sometimes people think about what did Jesus do, and they didn't think and concentrate so much on what Jesus was doing as a young person. So there are some funny stories that are out there in non we call them the Apocrypha, so they're non, they're the books of the Bible that didn't make it into the Bible for one reason or another. And there's some funny stories about uh, one time Jesus goes down to the well, somebody calls, I can't remember if it's Jesus or Jesus' mother, a bad name, and Jesus turns them into, I can't remember if it's a frog or a bird or something. And then Mary has to go, Jesus, you can't do that. And so Jesus has to go back down to the well and turn them back into um, a person again. Um, Do you think that's where the princess and the frog? <laughs> that's, that's a good question, Veronica. <laughs> I have no idea if that's where the princess and the frog started from. <laughs> but that's a good question. So, yeah, you can kind of think about, well, if you were going to write a story about Jesus being a young person, what would you, what would you write about? Would Jesus have to learn how to behave? Would Jesus already know how? What would Jesus get involved with? Do you think, uh, I don't know, would Jesus uh, try to share his message in rap now, days? Or um, do something else, <laughs> right? So you think about it, and you can uh, send me a text or message or email or something about what you think. All right? So let's say a prayer, and we'll send you off to class. Gracious one, we give you thanks for these stories and these wonderings and questions that we have about who Jesus was as a kid and how that might have been the same as us being kids and how that might have been a little bit different. We give you thanks that we can think about these things and ponder them because we know how much you love us and you care about us. In your great name we pray. Amen. And let us sing to the children. May the love of God fill you from your head down to your toes. May it wiggle through your fingers and dance upon your nose. May the people all around you help you live so loving grows. May the love of God fill you up until it overflows. Thank you, Veronica. And let us move into the time of prayers of the people. O oh, gracious one, we come before you today celebrating your baptism. Celebrating the waters throughout the world. Celebrating the ways in which you remind us that we too are your beloved children. So we find ourselves praying for the needs of all those who are close to our hearts. Holy One, 
During this time of a pandemic, we find ourselves praying for those who are becoming infected or are infected with the coronavirus, with COVID. We give you thanks for vaccinations, which help to keep the symptoms much more milder. And when they're not so mild, we give you thanks for the ways in which our medical community can care for us. But we are well aware of how it seems that the medical community is being overwhelmed once again with another variant rushing through. We pray for them. That they might continue to be centered in your great love. That they might continue in the ways in which they serve patients. See themselves as serving you. And being served in return. So we pray for those with COVID that they might have a sense of your enduring and comforting and loving presence and be reminded of that in the ways that others in the larger community care for them. Oh, gracious one, in your great and abounding love, we pray. And in your great and abounding love, answer. Oh, Holy One, we pray also for those who are struggling with other illnesses during this time of the pandemic. We especially remember Seth, who's a relation of Charlene. We especially pray for those who are dealing with pneumonia during a viral infection pandemic that is hitting our lungs. We again pray for the medical community, that they might be harbingers of your grace and mercy, that they might sense your wisdom. O oh, gracious one, in your abundant love we pray, and in your abundant love answer. Oh, Holy One, we pray on this day in which we're celebrating waters for those who have been affected by flooding or affected by strong waves who are crashing against the shore or those who are affected by avalanches and passes being closed. May we be reminded of the things that are truly important. One another. Our relationships with each other. Our relationships with you. May we continue to be people who reach out and touch and concern and love and service to the larger world and community. O Holy One, in your great and abundant love, we pray. And in your great and abundant love, answer. O Holy One, we pray for a lot of our family members, our friends, our schools, who are all dealing with COVID. We give you thanks for the communities and the doctors and the nurses. We give you thanks for schools and the school administrators who are so struggling to figure out how to keep school going in the midst of this pandemic. We ask for your sense of wisdom. O Holy One, in your great and abiding love, we pray. And in your great, deep, and abundant love, answer. We 
whom else do we pray this morning? I'd like to ask for prayers for the family of Aaron Cooper. He's the Nooksack tribal member who was walking by his house south of Deming uh, just a few days back here. He got hit and killed by a snowplow, a freakish verbal moment. The tribe will gather Monday at 10 tomorrow to honor his life. And I'm part of the ceremony of helping to honor his life. I do. So we ask for condolence for the tribe and for the family of Aaron Cooper. So we ask for prayers for Aaron Cooper and his extended family in the tribe as he was hit and killed this past week. O oh, Holy One, in your great and abundant love, we pray that and give you thanks for the ways that Aaron continues to live on in all of us and those that Aaron touched with his life. And that in your love, his love for us and for the world never dies. We ask for condolences for the extended community. The Holy One, in your great and abundant love, we pray. And in your great and abundant love, answer. Prayers for Annie's daughter, Lori, who has just been contacted by the CDC saying that she uh, has been tracked as having been by someone who has COVID. So prayers for Lori and for Annie that they both are able to get tested and be free of this horrible and debilitating and life-threatening disease. O oh, Holy One, in your great and abundant love, we pray. And in your great and abundant love, answer. Well, compassionate one, we also give you thanks for the ways in which you bless us with Libby's return home. We ask for her continued uh, recovery and healing. The Holy One, in your great and abundant love, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. The Holy One, on this day of your baptism, in which we celebrate, we're reminded that indeed you called Jesus your beloved, and you called all of us by return your beloved, and so as your beloved children, we pray. Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy reign come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the reign, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the prayer of illumination. Come to the word, seeking the presence of the living God. We come, we come seeking life with Christ and the promise of our baptism. Come to the word, seeking forgiveness for the hurts you have caused others. We come to offer our very selves as a living sacrifice. Come to the word, seeking acceptance with hearts ready to be born anew. We come to receive God's spirit. Listen for the word of God. 
The Holy Scripture comes from Luke 3, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. The people were full of anticipation, wondering in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. John answered them all by saying, I am baptizing you in water, but someone is coming who is mightier than I, whose sandals I cannot fit to untie. This one will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. A winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and gather the wheat into the granary, but the shaft will be burnt in unquenchable fire. When all the people were baptized, Jesus also came to be baptized. And while Jesus was praying, the skies opened and the Holy Spirit descended on the anointed one in a visible form like a dove. A voice from heaven said, you are my own, my beloved. On you, my favor rests. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In thinking about this passage this week, I got thinking about, in some ways, about water and how water is such a blessing uh, in many ways. I mean, it's hard to live without water. Um, it's amazing how close our own blood is in the makeup of salts and things to the sea. It's amazing how chlorophyll is close to that too. It's amazing how entwined we are with water. Sometimes water, um, for a lot of us here anyway, we can open the tap and we can pour a glass of water and it's clean and we can drink it. And yet there are other places in the United States and in Canada where if you go to the tap and turn the water on, you either can't drink it because of what is hidden in the water, like thinking of Flint, Michigan with uh, lead and other things, or in places where the water coming out of the tap is dirty and brown. Some of us take this kind of for granted that we can get clean water until we get a flood, right? And then there's a boil um, announcement. So thinking in particular, I believe it was yesterday that um, I think it was Port Angeles got a boil the water announcement because something had come into their water source. Or what happens with this last flood, thinking about water, sometimes it causes us all sorts of problems because it inundates not only our houses, it cuts us off from other people. So Laura and I were thinking about water in particular as we were headed down south to take Ingrid and Marnie back to Salem. And we didn't know if the flooding out of Chehalis was going to close the highway or not, because they had closed it. Water, right? Water, sometimes it comes down as snow and then makes travel, as we've experienced this last few weeks, really tough. Water. Sometimes we humans use so much water that we cause other parts of the United States to move into a complete drought. Thinking about how the Colorado River used to make it all the way down to um, the Gulf of Mexico, but has long since dried up before it gets there because we humans have sucked water off for our own use. Water. We need to drink so much of it. We need to 
You know, it's nice to bathe in it, whether a shower or by bath. It's nice sometimes to put it outside and then watch as the birds come and use it as a bird bath. Sometimes we fill up pools with water that are either hot, so we can soak in them and relax our muscles, or sometimes that are cool and refreshing as we swim around. Water. You know, I and my family have floated on, floated on the water, and hopefully we continue to float on the water as we've um, lived on our sailboat floating on the water. Sometimes when we're off sailing through, say, to one of the islands or something, I marvel at about what an interesting place it is to be on our sailboat. There is, on a clear day, you can see until you can't see anymore above us. And if you can peer down through the midst of the water in which we're on, there's, it would almost seem to be as much below us. And we're in this kind of middle ground of floating on water. And Jesus comes in the middle of a desert to water. Water which is a life source. Water which makes the difference between life and death. Water that is celebrated. Water that if somebody comes and knocks on your tent, you, in hospitality, give them water because it might mean the difference between life and death. Even if they are your enemy, you give them water. And yet, how many of us, as governments and other things, want to cut water off from other people? Water. Water. Water that sometimes when it's still and calm, we can see our own reflections in it. Sometimes when it's moving and bubbling past, we are comforted by the sound. Water. water. And as Jesus comes to be baptized by John, Jesus has a vision experience. One of my professors in seminary had this huge painting um, behind his desk that was, um, it was hugely long and it was just blue with this white dove descending. And he got talking to me about it, about some of his Lakota friends and mentors that he had over the years. And one of them came in and asked him why he had this. And he said, well, because I think Jesus was a dove dreamer. And that made sense to the Lakota, to be a dove dreamer. But then do we think about that when we see doves or maybe even pigeons around town? Do we think about that perhaps if, when we see a seagull? Some of them are our, shall we say, neighborhood friends who perch on the roof of the church. Do we think about the ways in which blessings happen, the ways in which blessings occur? In our own baptism liturgy, we start with a long prayer about giving thanks for water, about how the divine in the early creation stories swept over the water, how the divine in some ways saved Noah through water, how Jesus came to birth through the water of the womb, how water restores and cares for us. And do we then see ourselves and are we reminded that just like Jesus, we too are one of the divine's beloved? And do we see that belovedness within ourselves? 
the other thing I've been thinking about in some ways this week was years ago I went on a retreat and as part of the retreat um, one of the retreat leaders Terry Gibson played a Nina Simone song about image and I thought about playing that for you today but then I got wondering how does copyright work and some of those things so in both chats on uh, YouTube live or YouTube live on uh, Facebook live and here on zoom I'm going to put the link to that and uh, you can copy it down and watch it later perhaps Nina Simone in the song gets talking about how um, there is a woman who cannot see the beauty in herself or perhaps if she could go down to where the palm trees are and dance by the river she would see her reflection and see the beauty she has and then Simone concludes the song by saying, but there are no palm trees on her street and dishwater offers no reflection. But we do. Don't we offer reflection to one another? And isn't that in many ways why we gather as a beloved community together to remind each other and the world about our belovedness, our belovedness. So the next time you find yourself taking a bath or a shower or washing your hands, which we do a lot of these days, may we reflect and be reminded of our baptism and our own belovedness. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joel. Um, in reflection of that sermon, um, the next song is Oceans. Thank you. 
so beautiful ah now an invitation to share our blessings people of god do we know who we are we are god's beloved children we are the wheat in christ's granary we are the works of the spirit fashioned into the body of christ sealed in god's love through the waters of our baptism let us abide in the power of the living god let us share our abundant blessings. Amen. As you prepare your offering, please say a prayer for the mission and ministry of this church. Let me send a check to P.O. Box 186, Ferndale, Washington, 98248, or visit our homepage at ucf1.org and look for the donate button or set up an automatic deposit with your bank. Thank you. Our prayer of dedication. Mighty one, your voice is powerful, shaking the wilderness and stripping the forest bare. Speak words of blessing upon our offering this day that nothing may hinder the good of our gifts or may do in your name. Give strength to your people through the gifts we may bring before you, that all may know the glory of your spirit. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia. 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 And for our closing hymn today, we have Wade in the Water. trouble the water 
Trouble the water. Who's that yonder dressed in white? Wait in the water. Must be the children of the Israelites. God's gonna trouble the water. Trouble the water. Thank you, Veronica. That was great. That was great. Hear this benediction. As we go through life, let us be not afraid to wade in the water where the divine may be troubling it. For we are God's beloved and we share that belovedness with the world. Amen.
Oh, thank you, Roger. Thank you, Veronica, for sharing the music with us today. Thank you, Beth, for being the liturgist. And for Ken, for working behind the scenes as the co-host. Thanks, Rosalind, for working with the kids. And thank you, Joe and Mike, for the question this morning. So kids, if you got a question, send it my way. It might make it into the children's chapel area, right? Let's see, who have I got everybody? Oh, and thank you, Julia, for putting the bulletins and stuff together. So I'm going to switch this over to gallery view, and let's go ahead and wave at our Facebook friends. Have a blessed week, everybody. Break.